So I've made videos talking about the New York Rangers, the Ottawa Senators, and the Minnesota Wild, and today I'm going to be continuing that style, and we are going to be talking about the Detroit Red Wings, who of course were the laughingstock of the NHL in the 2019-20 season. But in this video, we aren't really going to focus on that because I've made multiple videos on them throughout the 2019-20 season, just ripping them up for how awful they were. In this video, I kind of just want to focus on the future and what we can really expect from this team moving forward. Because even though things don't really look great for the Red Wings right now coming off of a historically bad season, there is still a lot to look forward to, and on the bright side, they can't really get any worse than they were this season. I mean, it would literally be impressive if they managed to be worse next season than they were in the 2019-20 season. Real quickly before we begin, I just want to plug my second channel that I recently made. It's just called Onyquist Gaming. I will link it down below in the description. If that is something that you guys are interested in, then be sure to go down there and subscribe. And of course, if you guys are new to this channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a video. And with all that being said, let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. I kind of split this video up into six different sections in terms of things I wanted to talk about. And I guess we'll just start off with talking about the offseason because it isn't really too far away, you know, depending on when the 2020 playoffs do come to an end. But it's going to be a big offseason for the Red Wings, and as a fan of Detroit, I think I'm probably more excited for the offseason in terms of free agency in the draft than I actually am for the start of the 2020-21 season. Of course, the Red Wings do have a lot riding on the 2020 NHL draft and the potential to land a franchise player like Alexi Lafreniere. And just the fact that for the first time in a long time, Detroit actually has a lot of cap space going into the offseason and now have Steve Eisenman at the helm. That does get me pretty excited, even though I don't think he's going to be too active in free agency. I don't see Detroit being players in like the Taylor Hall sweepstakes or Alex Petrangelo or any of those really big name free agents. But maybe he goes out and signs a guy like Robin Lehner, who could come in and form a solid tandem with Jonathan Bernier, who despite playing for a historically bad team, actually had a strong season and accounted for basically every Red Wings win with the exception of a couple. And considering Detroit has a pretty big hole at the second line center spot, maybe he could go out and sign a guy like Mikel Granlund, who played very well at the center position throughout his time in Minnesota and really just never fit in all that well in Nashville. Overall, I'm really excited for the offseason, especially the 2020 draft. I'm probably going to do a live reaction on the channel to the draft lottery, which could either go really well or really bad bad but anyways moving on now to the next section I want to talk about and that is the young guns that the Red Wings have heading into next season and I'm not talking about somebody that they could draft I'm talking about players that they already have in the system guys like Philip Zadina who is definitely in my opinion ready for a full-time role in the NHL in the games that he played this season he was one of the better forwards on the team and then you also have a guy like Joe Valeno, who played all season in the American Hockey League. And while I think it will be much of the same for him next season, I just hope he continues to develop down there. And if I had to guess, I think he'll probably see a handful of games with the Red Wings too. And then last, but certainly not least, we have Big Mo Sider, who the Red Wings took 6th overall in the 2019 draft. At the time, it was a selection that shocked a lot of people, but looking back on it, Honestly, it looks like a pretty good draft pick by Steve Eisman because Mo Sider had a fantastic rookie season in the American Hockey League, and you can't tell me that there are six defenders in Detroit's system that are better than this guy right now. I would be extremely surprised if he's not a full-time member of the team heading into next season. The only way I could see him spending another season in the American Hockey League is if Detroit goes out and signs multiple free agent defensemen that are more capable of playing in the NHL over him, but I'm really not too worried about it all. I think we're going to see a lot of Mo Sider in a Red Wings uniform next season, and it's going to be a welcoming sight considering really the only constant on the blue line for the Red Wings in the 1920 season was Philip Peronik. But so far, we've talked about a lot of the good and a lot of the things that Red Wings fans can look forward to but the next section of the video is how there is still lots of bad despite detroit having a lot of cap space this offseason there is still a couple really bad contracts on the team of course justin abdulkader who is still on the books at 4.25 mil until the end of the 2022-23 season and he didn't even score a goal in 49 games this year and then of course the other really bad contract is franz nielsen who's on the books until the end of the 21-22 season at a cap of 5.25 million dollars that is nine and a half million dollars tied up between two players who combined for four goals this past season i would be extremely surprised if both of these players make it through their contracts without being bought out or maybe Detroit sends a couple of draft picks to seattle in the expansion draft in order for seattle to take on one of these bad contracts 
I'm not sure, but it was really tough this past season watching guys like Franz Nielsen and Justin Ablocator get the ice time and get the opportunity to play over guys like a Brendan Perlini who is a healthy scratch a ton, who still is young and has a bit of upside. I really hope guys like Ablocator and like Franz Nielsen are on tighter leashes next season and younger guys are given the opportunity to play ahead of them, which kind of brings me to the next topic I wanted to talk about in the video, and that is Jeff Blashill. Obviously, it did come out, I believe it was a week and a half ago or something along those lines, that Steve Eisenman said Jeff Blashill will be returning next season as head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. Now, I didn't make a video on it at the time because I wanted to wait and talk about it in a video structured like this. So that's why I'm going to talk about it here. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while and you watched a lot of my videos throughout the season on the Red Wings, you would know that I'm really not the biggest fan of Jeff Blashill. His decision making at times throughout the 2019-20 season were questionable at best. You know, playing guys like Justin Abdelkader and Luke Glendening on the first line with Larkin and Mantha over somebody like Philip Zadina or even over somebody like Robbie Fabry. That was some questionable decision making, but other than that, I feel like a lot of the times I was just taking my frustrations out on him because I wanted someone to blame, but I have to remember that he wasn't given a team to win games this year. This team was meant to lose. This team was meant to get the best chance possible at the number one overall pick, and they definitely succeeded in that, and Steve Osmond was right when he said nobody can really be evaluated on their play or on their performance from the 2019-20 season because the season was pretty much just a joke, and it's a season that can be forgotten, and now everybody can head into next year with a clean slate and hope to perform better. So that is kind of my stance on the Red Wings bringing Jeff Blashill back for next season. I'm not happy about it, but I'm not mad about it either. It's just one of those things where we're really just going to have to wait and see how it works out and wait and see what happens. Moving on to the next section of the video, I want to talk about my expectations for Detroit heading into the 2020-21 season. And I'll tell you right now, they're not high, but I expect them to be better than they were this past season, which I think is inevitable. I mean, they weren't even trying to be good, so I would hope they'd get better. But above everything else, I just want to have fun watching my favorite team play. I hope they're a fun team to watch because this past season, it was like a chore to watch some of these games. It was painful at times to watch, and that's really something that I hope changes heading into next season. And overall, I just want to see the youth take over and really develop and overall just take this team in the right direction. There are guys that I haven't even mentioned in the video, of course, you know, the top guns like Mantha and Larkin, Fabry, Bertuzzi, and those guys. I feel like I don't even have to mention them, but then there are also guys like Tara Hirose, Michael Rasmussen, and Evgeny Svechnikov. Those are three players that if they come in, obviously all make the team and have a decent season, that could really help out in terms of the depth because depth is something I really think the Red Wings are going to struggle with. But overall, those are my expectations for next season. You can tell they're not very high. All I ask is that they're fun to watch. I mean, I don't think that's too much to ask for. And now to finish out the video, I made a little wish list of a couple of things that I want to see happen for the Red Wings next season. The first being a Joe Valeno nine game call up. Of course, if you are only called up for nine games, then it doesn't burn a year of your entry level contract. We saw that with Philip Sedina in the 2018-19 season, and I'm hoping we can see that with Joe Valeno in this up and coming season. That's the first thing. The next thing I have is a healthy Anthony Mantha because he was on a tear to start this season, scored four goals in the home opener, was looking like he could have like a 30, maybe even 40 goal season. And then, of course, he was just riddled with injuries throughout the year. It seems like whenever he fights, he has some pretty bad luck. So I'm hoping he shies away from fighting next season and can have a full healthy year. The third thing I have is a full season of Philip Zadina. The amount of times he was called up and sent back down this past season was honestly pretty ridiculous. I don't want to see any more of that next year. I think he's ready, like I said earlier in the video, for a full-time role in the NHL. So that's the third thing I have on this list. The fourth thing I have is Mo Sider in the top four. Again, like I said earlier in the video, you can't tell me that there are six defensemen that deserve to be on the Red Wings blue line next season over Moritz Sider. I'll be honest, I think that he could potentially come in and be the best defenseman on the team right away, even ahead of a guy like Philip Peronik, just in terms of Sider's overall game. I really think he's going to be a beast. I'm pumped for him to play next season, and yeah, I hope he's consistently in the top four. The final thing I have, like I said, above everything else, just be fun. Just be a fun team to watch, and don't make it painful for your fans to sit through 
and watch your games for the second straight year. But yeah, guys, that is pretty much going to wrap up the video. I really hope you all enjoyed, and make sure to let me know down in the comments section below, of course, your thoughts on the Red Wings moving forward, and also what team would you want me to do a video like this on next. And with all that being said, if you guys did enjoy today's video, please make sure to go down there and drop a like on it. That's the best way to show your support. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel and you want to see more NHL content like this, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, and I will see you all in the next video.